Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for November 2nd, 2010, and now the news. Just to show you how much this crazy old world is changing, Harley Davidson announced it will open an assembly plant in India. The company will send kits from its U.S. assembly plants for final assembly at a new plant in India. Harley expects the facility to be operational in the first half of next year. With a growing economy, demand for upscale motorcycles is increasing in India. The company just opened its first dealership in the country in July and currently offers 12 different models. Yesterday we showed you a small two-seat electric vehicle concept from Nissan, and today there's more EV news from the company. According to the Detroit News, Nissan plans to introduce three EVs in the U.S. over the next four years, not including the LEAF. No other details are known except that the vehicles will include an Infiniti model, a small commercial van, and a small urban car. We all know that Chinese automakers will ultimately start exporting cars all around the world, but before they can crack the developed markets, they're going to need to do a better job of designing better cars. Last week, we showed you a car from Geely that folded up like an accordion and received zero stars in a crash test. Now, Gasgu reports that Brilliance Auto will have to stop exporting models to Europe because it cannot meet the stricter Euro 5 emission standards that go into effect next year. American enthusiasts have complained for decades that European enthusiasts got all the fun, affordable stuff but now they have reason to rejoice. The Ford Racing Performance Group is bringing its Fiesta R2 rally kit to the U.S. It can transform a mundane Fiesta into a rally car thanks to a raft of upgraded parts. The 1.6-liter four-cylinder engine gets new camshafts, connecting rods, pistons, and more. Output jumps to 168 horsepower and 134 pound-feet of torque. The five-speed transmission also gets a thorough rework. The chassis upgrades include adjustable dampers with iBox springs and a roll cage. The car also gets new brakes. Team O'Neill Motorsports is the official reseller and authorized installer for the R2 kits. Only cars prepared by Team O'Neill will be eligible for the U.S. Fiesta Sport Trophy Championship. Ford has not announced the price of the package. You can contact Team O'Neill for more information. You know, if automakers could only make cars a lot lighter, they could drastically improve fuel efficiency at the same time they improved handling. Now researchers in the United States, Australia, and Russia have developed a new type of aluminum alloy. According to Wards, the metal has the strength of one gigapascal, no, I did not make that term up, which makes it comparable to very strong steel. The secret to its strength? Well, it all has to do with grain size. Nano-structured metals, those with very tiny grain sizes, are very strong, but they do not absorb as much energy before breaking. This new material, which is twice as strong as conventional aluminum, has a special structure. Researchers fine-tuned the grain size, which helps disperse the alloys on an atomic level. Going forward, look for metallurgists to continue improving conventional materials to make them lighter and stronger. While taxpayers are clamoring to get the U.S. government to sell its stake in General Motors, the Canadian Auto Workers Union is advising the Canadian government to hold on to its shares in GM. Ken Lowenza, the head of the CAW, says that's the only way Canada can ensure that it gets GM to build cars in the Great White North. The Canadian government and the province of Ontario hold about 12% of the shares in GM. The other major shareholders are the U.S. government and the UAW. We've been reporting on all kinds of electric cars that are coming out, but here is one of the coolest looking ones we've ever seen. Meet the eight-wheeled Elika. Never heard of it before? That's because it's the creation of Hiroshi Shimizu, the head of a research company called SimDrive. He's also an engineering professor at Keio University in Japan. He claims the Elika will go from 0 to 60 in only 4 seconds and has a top speed over 200 miles an hour. It uses 8-wheel motors for propulsion, and Shimizu says that unsprung weight is not an issue. 
with the same size battery pack as the Nissan Leaf, he says it'll have a driving range of 200 miles, twice what the Leaf can do. If he can make 100,000 of them a year, Shimizu says the cost of the car will be under $18,000, not including the batteries. Now we'll have to see if he can back up those claims, but this sure is a cool looking electric car. Finding a parking spot can be a real hassle, especially when you're in a hurry. That's why Volkswagen is working on a car that can park itself. We'll show you what that's all about right after this. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. Lincoln and Lexus have a parking feature that will automatically back a car into a parking space. But Volkswagen wants to take a big step beyond that. It wants to develop a car that can do more than just back into a space. Recently, Autoline Daily got a chance to go visit Volkswagen's Electronics Research Center in Palo Alto, California, and see what this self-parking car is all about. So what we have here is Junior 3, a Volkswagen Passat wagon. Um, this car is kind of special. It's equipped with the uh, autonomous valet parking system, which we've de developed here at the Electronics Research Lab. This, um, it's, a it's a research project. This, what this car allows for the customer to do or the driver to do is never set foot in a parking garage. So the, the driver with his wife's kids everywhere, they go into a parking garage, say in Fisherman's Wharf, um, they leave the car at the entrance, get out of the vehicle um, with, this, uh, with their smartphone, with this application, they're allowed to um, uh, control the car and the only control they have is park and return. They don't need to do anything else. So they step out of the vehicle, get a safe distance away from the vehicle and say park. They can walk away at that point, the car will enter the parking garage um, and using only automotive grade sensors, what it will do is follow a search path look for free spots, and when it finds the first free spot, it'll back into that parking spot, shut down, uh, turn off the engine, put, engage the parking brake, put it into park, all the things a normal driver would do, it does by itself. Um, and then some hours later, the family comes back, or is walking back, not even at the garage yet, and whips out their um, smartphone again and says return. The car will pull out of the parking spot and um, proceed to a parking garage exit, wherever that may be. And, uh, and the car is waiting, idling, and the family arrives. And that's the idea. We'll have a lot more about VW's Electronics Research Center in Silicon Valley in the coming weeks. But that brings us to the end of today's report on the top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.